so okay let's one of the things that Audubon was striving to do was to paint the birds life-size in their natural habitat and a lot of people told them at the time that's crazy who's going to have uh, a table big enough to put this on wow okay let's talk about that one. 11 years for the total production uh, 87, roughly 87,000 prints, which were just done in, of course, the black on white outline uh, from the uh, etching, and then hand colored. Uh, this was a production. Uh, uh, it's estimated that there might have been as many as 40 people simultaneously working on coloring these and just great big room with a model image up in the front of the room and then your job was to copy that. Okay. Not a... Here it comes. Uh, there we are. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Okay, there. Wow. Very beautiful. God, that hand watercoloring is amazing. Plus the poses are so strange. This one's, this is one of the strangest um, of the birds I've been working on, it's quite odd. This, this is, you know, we need to see the bird's beak because the bird's beak was special. So what kind of pose, how can we get a view of the top of the head to understand the breadth of the beak? Um, what kind of pose can we put the female in to get a sense of that soft beak that's used for s scouring the bottom for, for mollusks? Of course, one of the, the questions you're pointing out with the head here, and. To what extent is this uh, art, and to what extent is this science, scientific replication? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's always fascinated me about mm -hmm. Audubon. He's in a tough spot in a way because a bird never flies with their head in that position mm -hmm. and their wings in this position. So he is caught somewhere in between the description. What mm -hmm. is he describing? And I think what I love about these things, he's describing the birds. He's struggling to create a gesture that brings the birds to life. He's, he's, he's also struggling to make a, a beautiful, complex image, a, a, an image we relate to with the kind of complexity that we relate to the, the art we value the most. Um, so things like composition, um, how the arrangement on the page, um, that wing does look like it's pulled up and given to us. And it's beautiful that it's given to us so we can see it. And where this wing is given to us as a mark, as a gesture, and that relationship between a gesture and... and, and a, what it is that makes for a beautiful image and what it is that makes for a beautiful description. But if there, there were, if you say this, really fascinating issues about what he's trying to do and how that was different than what people before him were trying to do in the sense in which he really was an innovator. Oh, oh my, oh my, oh my God. Wow. One of the reasons he was criticized by uh, many of his contemporaries because he deviated so far from what was the standard, previous standard for how you would illustrate, at least scientifically, a bird. And he'd, he'd go around when he was marketing all of this in England in the, in the 1820s and 30s, he would uh, take his watercolors and just rent a huge gallery and just hang them on the walls. Mm -hmm. And a very common reaction from people who seeing these for the first time, seeing Audubon's illustrations for the first time, was, my God, I've never seen anything like that yeah. before. And they hadn't.